Okay, hello and uh, welcome back. In the last lecture, uh, we uh, we defined what is a directed graph and what was it? It is basically uh, a pair of uh, sets, uh, the set B uh, of uh, the vertices and then set A of uh, arcs which are uh, ordered pairs of uh, uh, elements of B. So the difference from uh, that of uh, the ordinary graph uh, is that uh, instead of uh, two elements of set, we have uh, uh, ordered uh, pairs of it. Now this uh, this enables us to uh, visualize the graph as having uh, some kind of direction uh, for the edges. That like if one three is an ordered pair, I can I can represent by drawing a curve connecting one to three, but with an arrow uh, which says that it's actually going from one and going to three. So therefore. Uh, uh, the direction is, uh, uh, is is represented by the arrow, and and that tells you also what is the what is the uh, arc, right? What is the uh, ordered double, right? When I have one two as the uh, uh, as the elements uh, of the two element set, then and the direction comes by uh, seeing that there is an arc from two to one, so therefore two one must be the corresponding uh, arc. Now, uh, here is an example uh, of a of a, a graph a diagraph uh, where uh, v is the set one two three four five. Then we have uh, we have a as uh, set one three uh, three four uh, two one uh, two four four five and five four. Now there is four five as well as five four, which enables us to go from four to five as well as from five to four uh, by taking an arc. On the other hand, if you look at uh, 2 and 4, I can go from 2 to 4, but there is no way to go from 4 to 2 in this case. So it, it, uh, it's important uh, to uh, have this direction. And uh, that uh, allows us to represent uh, uh, more uh, information about the network, for example. Uh, when you have a traffic network where some of the roads are uh, one ways, then we know that we cannot have uh, you know, bidirectional uh, you know, commutation and hence uh, this will uh, allow us to represent traffic networks better. Now, uh, if you look at the set of all uh, vertices, the multi set of all vertices is that x, y uh, is an arc, uh, it is called the out degree of x. These are the number of uh, edges which uh, goes out of x, right? So start from x and go to some other vertex. Then it is usually denoted by d plus of x that says that uh, the out degree of the vertex x. And similarly, the multi set uh, set of all y says that uh, y x is an arc, is the in degree, which means that all the r's which are coming into uh, y that is denoted by d minus of x. So we have the out degree as well as the uh, in degree. Now, uh, you know, if you think about this, one can see that if I have an arc from any vertex, let's say x to y, then of course, uh, you know, uh, it, it contributes one to the in degree uh, of x and one to the out degree of y, right? So therefore, the following theorem is immediate, that uh, if you look at uh, d equal to uh, v comma a uh, as a diagraph, then sum over all the vertices d plus of v, right, the out degrees, is equal to sum over all the uh, vertices in degree of v, right? So the out degree sum must be equal to the in degree sum, which is equal to the uh, cardinality of the R set, right? How many R's are there? So this is this is uh, immediately clear, uh, and uh, the proof also we have just uh, mentioned. Now uh, in 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 diagrams we uh, usually also allow loops. Uh, that is, you can have uh, you know uh, v to v. Uh, uh, as an edge, right, where uh, I, I go from V and then comes back to V. And these are called loops. And uh, uh, often we, we consider this kind of uh, loops in our diagrams. But of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, we also discuss loopless diagrams uh, most of the time, and then only when we require, we will mention it and then uh, use it. Now the a degree of a vertex is the sum of the in degree and out degree. Right? That is the number of edges which is actually going. So you can you can also see this as uh, as the 
as the degree uh, of the underlying graph where we discard the directions right so if you see the edges right uh, as uh, uh, the arcs as edges rather than you know, uh, you know direct uh, directed edges then uh, you you will get a, a, a multi graph right you can get a multi graph where you allow multiple uh, edges between a pair of edges and then you can see that it is basically the degree of the multi graph so for uh, one can one can uh, uh, talk about the uh, underlying uh, graph of a diagram then uh, the loops usually count for uh, two for the degree of a vertex because the in degree is there and out degree is there and for the undirected case also most of the time we will do that then uh, very similar to what we uh, did in the undirected graphs we can define directed walk uh, path and cycle where uh, a directed walk is basically uh, a sequence of vertices v1 v2 etc vk uh, where uh, VI, VA plus 1 uh, for every i less than k uh, is an R, right? So we need to have R's in that particular direction. So, right? So this, uh, this uh, is a directed walk. Now, uh, if if the vertices are uh, not repeated, right? Uh, we, you know, one vertex only appears once then a directed walk uh, as we uh, as in the case of the undirected graph also it's called a directed path so uh, here i have a, a, a graph i mean a directed graph u and v are there and then you have r's going from u to uh, v right so uv is a, an example of a directed path on the other hand uh, one two three right here uh, i have written in hello or, or greenish yellow uh, is basically uh, not a uh, not a walk or a path because one to two is uh, an r but two to three is not an r so one two three cannot be a uh, path or a walk so on, on the other hand one two is a uh, walk and a path three two is a walk and a path right? so therefore a directed cycle uh, just like in the case of undirected case again Right. Uh, if V is a uh, UV directed path, then you add uh, the arc uh, V to U also, then that is a directed uh, cycle. Right. So U to V and then coming back to uh, U from V directly. So uh, examples are uh, in this graph above, right? So you can see that uh, 1 uh, to 3, then 3 to 2 and 2 to 1 is a directed cycle. Right, so this is a directed cycle, and then uh, you have one to five, one to five, five to four, four to three, three to two, two to one. Right, this is another uh, directed cycle. But on the other hand, 1 to 6, uh, you know, uh, or like uh, 5 to 6, uh, 6 to 1, and 1 to 5, even though it's a cycle, it's not a directed cycle, right? It's a cycle in the uh, undirected graph, but on a directed graph, it is not a cycle. It's not a directed cycle. Now, uh, we define a special type of digraph. It's called functional digraphs. So functional diagrams are basically uh, diagrams which can represent uh, endo function functions from a set to itself. Now let us uh, let us take uh, a, a diagram uh, with a vertex at v, and then we say it is a functional diagram if the out degree of every vertex is actually equal to one, right? So every vertex has exactly one uh, edge going out of it. It could have many coming inside, but uh, going outside is exactly one. And this uh, you can see immediately why it should be the case because uh, if you are defining a function, it can only have a unique image. It cannot have uh, multiple uh, images for an element, right? So here is an example of a functional digraph uh, where uh, where uh, you, if you if you look at any vertex, you will see it has exactly one outgoing edge, right? So let us see that. Uh, vertex 2 uh, or 
1, right? It has exactly 1. Then vector 3 has 2 incoming, but 1 outgoing. 5 has 1 outgoing. 4 has 1 outgoing, right? 6, then 8, 7, uh, and uh, you know, like uh, then uh, 11, uh, 10, 9. All these things has exactly one outgoing uh, arc. And uh, you can verify for other vertices. So what we have is a functional diagram. Now, why is it called functional diagrams? Because it actually represents a end of function from V to V, right? So you can see the function by just looking at what uh, each element is mapped to as the uh, as the uh, you know out neighbor of the vertex. So out neighbor of a vertex is the vertex which is obtained, uh, which is a neighbor through the out uh, going arc, right? So, uh, in this particular example, we have f of 1 uh, because 1 is going to 3, f of 1 is equal to 3. Similarly, 2 is also going to 3, so f of 2 is equal to 3. Right? f of 3 is 4, f of 5 is 4, right? And uh, similarly, you have all these values, right? f of uh, 14 is equal to 14 because there is a loop there. And uh, yeah, so this is how uh, it is. Now, what I want uh, you to do is to uh, draw a few functional diagrams by yourself and then uh, try to see whether you can observe any nice properties about this. So, if you think about this and then come up with some observation, that would be very nice. Now, we say a vertex in a functional diagram to be cyclic if it belongs to some cycle of the diagram. Okay. So any vertex that is part of a cycle is called a cyclic vertex. So in the previous example, right, we, we saw that like uh, the vertices uh, 14 is cyclic because 14 is in a loop. Then uh, 12 and 13 are cyclic because 12 to 13 and 13 to 12 are also uh, arcs. Uh, which forms a directed cycle, two cycle. And then we have uh, uh, this other uh, part, right, where we have 4 going to 6, 6 going to 8, 8 going to 7, and 7 going to 4 again, right? That's another cycle. So 4, 6, 7, 8 are again part of uh, uh, a cycle, so therefore they are cyclic vertices. So we have this 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, uh, plus 3, 7 a cyclic vertices, right? So, uh, these are the cyclic vertices, other vertices are not cyclic because they are not part of a cycle. Now, suppose you have a functional diagraph and uh, if, suppose, uh, you know, if this graph has exactly one uh, cyclic vertex, right? In the entire graph, there is only one cyclic vertex. Then we call this diagraph as a rooted tree. The rooted tree is basically a functional diagram where we have exactly one uh, cyclic vertex, right? And, and the root of the vertex is the uh, vertex having a cycle. So in this example, you have seven as a, uh, a root of the uh, you know, functional diagram because seven is uh, a single uh, cyclic vertex, which is in a loop and every other vertex you can see has exactly one outgoing edge so therefore it's actually a functional diagram. So we have a rooted tree now, right? So rooted tree is basically a functional diagram with exactly one cyclic vertex. Now I give you some homework questions. Uh, first uh, define uh, five let's say different uh, functions uh, from a vertex uh, set uh, 1 to 12, let's say to itself, and draw a corresponding functional diagram. Okay? And once you draw this, uh, look at uh, the properties of this. So draw the functional diagrams each on, uh, uh, I mean, two functional diagrams each on uh, 8, 9, and 10 vertices, then write the corresponding functions. Now, if you have observed uh, some properties after drawing several of these, uh, you must have. Uh, seen some few properties then what are these properties that you have seen so make a note of that and try to uh, write it now try to prove each of uh, your observations uh, and see whether you know this observation is actually a property for the entire uh, functional diagrams or not now if you have uh, a, a graph 
let's say g then every close work uh, of odd length contains an odd side okay this is a this is a uh, this is not for directed graph i am i'm asking you to prove for uh, normal graphs okay so given a, a graph g then every close work of odd length contains an odd side so this homework uh, you must do because we are going to use it uh, to prove something else now some properties of functional diagrams okay uh, so we are looking at functional diagram of spe special type of functions now uh, which are the permutation so permutation is a bijection from a set to itself right so we have uh, the following permutation let's say p which takes 1 to 7 uh, 2 to 8 3 to 4 4 to 3 5 to 10 etc right 9 10 to 1 now what is the functional diagram of this permutation so if you look at the functional diagram of this permutation you will see something interesting right if you look at this functional diagram you will see that well you have 1 7 1 is going to 7 because uh, 1 7 uh, is the map then 7 what happens to 7 7 goes to 5 right so to draw the diagraph you basically do this right define the function and then you look at uh, what happens so 7 going to 5 then 5 goes to 10 then 10 goes to 1 right so now uh, that uh, is one cycle then uh, we have to start with the next available one right so i start from 3 3 to 4 then 4 to 3 again comes back another cycle then you start from 2 right 2 to 8 8 to 6 and uh, 6 to 2 again right and similarly 9 is mapped to itself so therefore it's a cycle again. so if you look at this you will see that all the uh, you know like it's basically a collection of cycles right every vertex is part of a cycle now this one can see why it should be true in the case of uh, permutation right uh, now this also gives us uh, a, a, you know an inkling that why uh, basically a permutation uh, can be represented as uh, cycles right so we have a cycle represented permutations which comes from the uh, observation that the diagrams uh, of the permutations are basically a collection of cycles so you can try with several examples right so try to define certain permutations draw the functional diagrams and see whether you have the same property now the so functional diagram of permutations is a collection of cycles right this is an observation that you can immediately make and then uh, if you inverse each arc of the diagram right then we get the functional diagram of the inverse of the associated permutation so uh, again like you know if you if you map from 1 to 10 10 to uh, 5 then 5 to 7 and 7 to 1 etc then you will get what you get is basically the inverse of the uh, associated permutation and the corresponding function like now here is a theorem uh, we want to prove right so if uh, if f is a, a bijection from v to v then the functional diagram of V is a disjoint union of directed cycles. Right? So we can now prove it uh, formally. So I want you to think about the proof before uh, you know you, you go ahead with this proof, but uh, it would be it would be nice to do that. Now, how do you prove this? So we know that F is a bijection, right? So it's a bijection, which means that every element of V has a unique image and a unique pre-image, right? So uh, by the definition of bijection, there is a one to one uh, correspondence right so every element has uh, an image and it has also a pre image unique pre image now which means that every vertex of the functional diagram so if you look at the functional diagram you know that it has exactly one outgoing edge because it is a functional diagram anyway but it also has exactly one incoming edge right now if the number of uh, you know so the so the outgoing edge is one and incoming edge is one so which means that if you look at the uh, the underlying graph right without the directions then what is it it is basically a uh, you know every vertex has degree exactly two because one is actually the outgoing uh, vertex uh, out, outgoing arc and one is the incoming arc right these two contribute degree two therefore we see that the underlying graph every vertex has degree two now 
it's a it's a simple uh, exercise to uh, show that if uh, if a graph has the property that every vertex has degree exactly two, then it is basically a collection of cycles. Right? Uh, so this uh, will allow us to uh, see why uh, this should be uh, the case. The uh, permutation must have uh, a collection of cycles. So of degree is equal to one and degree is equal to one. Since every vertex has degree two, it must decompose into this joint union of cycles. So I want you to prove this uh, formally, right? I prove. But it is uh, it is kind of obvious, right? But then uh, try to write it formally. And this is true only because uh, we assume that V is finite, right? If for infinite uh, uh, vertices, you can have uh, uh, just a path uh, uh, where the, I mean, yeah, um, we can have a tree, for example, right? Where every vertex has degree exactly two, and then uh, uh, it, it need not hold. Now, since every vertex has uh, d plus of v is equal to one and d minus of v uh, is equal to one, right? The cycles must be directed cycles. Now, can you see why, right? So every vertex has the out degree and in degree equal to one. Then uh, the cycles in the uh, graph must all, all be directed cycles. Because if it is not directed cycles, you will see that some vertices cannot have this property. We have another proof now uh, using uh, using walks. Okay? So start from any vertex uh, u and take a walk. Right? Since every vertex has an out neighbor, the walk contains uh, continues for any length, right? Because see, I start from a vertex, then I go uh, to the next neighbor taking the out degree. Now I have taken an incoming edge to go here, so therefore now I can also go out of this. Uh, so I I go out of it to another vertex. And then I continue, right? So I keep on continuing this, and uh, I can do it as much as I want because every time I reach a vertex, I can go out of. But now, since the graph is finite, this walk uh, cannot be infinite, right? So I mean, can, walk can be infinite, but the walk must repeat vertices because we have only finite linear vertices. So I start from a vertex, then eventually it must come back to some vertex. Now, the first vertex that repeats must be the starting vertex u itself. Why is that? Uh, can you think of this? So try to try to see if I have a you know if I have a functional diagram, and then we start from a vertex, then you go because every time you can go out of it, uh, and then if uh, you know eventually eventually a vertex is repeating in the case of permutations. Eventually, if a vertex is repeating, then it should be the starting vertex itself. It need not be the case for functional diagrams, arbitrary functional diagrams, but for the permutation case, it must be the vertex uh, u itself. Now, why is that? Because if that is not the case, the repeated vertex, right? Uh, what happens to it? I start from u, I go to let's say v, and then uh, go further, and then suppose it comes back to v, not to u, then if you look at the vertex uh, v, right? So v already had an incoming edge from u, right? And then outgoing edge that we took as part of the walk, and then coming back without visiting u, we means that I am basically having another uh, incoming edge to the vertex v. So I have two incoming uh, vertices, so in degree is at least two. But we said that uh, the in degree is exactly uh, one because it has only pre image. Unique remains. So therefore, uh, we we see that like uh, if I start from a vertex, you know, after some time, it must finally come back to the starting vertex. So now that forms a cycle by the definition of cycle, right? You know, I have a, a, a sequence of vertices without repeating anything except uh, the first one uh, is repeated, right? Then you get a cycle, directed cycle. Now uh, I can throw away these vertices, right? Because all the uh, you know in ingoing, uh, you know incoming and outgoing edges are counted now for these vertices, so I throw away. And then remaining I can start again, right? So therefore I get a decomposition into cycles. So here is another uh, different. Now uh, as a homework, uh, I define the following. I, I let uh, C of n k 
as the number of permutations of an n element set whose functional digraph is a disjoint union of ksi okay. so the number of permutations whose functional digraph is a disjoint union of ksi exactly ksi so that cnk satisfies the following recursion formula cnk is equal to c of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus n minus 1 times c of n minus 1 comma k for 0 strictly less than k less than n with the initial conditions that c of n 0 is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0 it is equal to 0 if n is not equal to 0 and c of n n is equal to 1 so this uh, you know uh, conditions uh, lets you uh, calculate c and k uniquely and uh, uh, find out this right so you can think about this the next uh, notion i want to uh, look at in this case is that of uh, connectedness so given a graph g uh, we say the graph g is connected if and only if for every pair of vertices let's say u v walk in the graph so if there is a uv walk for every uh, pair of vertices then the graph is said to be connected now if you are looking at digraphs we say that the digraph is connected if for every pair of vertices uh, is strongly connected if uh, for every pair of vertices there is a uv walk uh, directed walk right in the digraph okay. so uh, in the case of graph we say the graph is connected if uh, any two vertices has a uh, has a uh, walk between them or a path between them. Similarly, uh, we say a graph, a digraph is strongly connected if for every pair of vertices uh, I can reach any vertex from any other vertex. So here are some examples. Uh, the first one uh, is basically an undirected graph. Where uh, which is not connected because it has several uh, uh, come I know several parts where uh, I can go from one to two and two to one but I cannot go from one or two to let's say three right so there is no there is no walk or path from uh, two to three so therefore uh, you know this graph is not uh, connected so you will you will see that uh, uh, you know there are uh, several such uh, parts and each part is basically connected right. Then you have uh, the directed graph, uh, which is not strongly connected, even though the underlying graph is connected. Right? You have this uh, second case where uh, uh, you cannot go from one of the vertices to the other. Uh, you know, for any pair of vertices, right? For example, I can go from this vertex here but uh, i don't have any way to come back from that vertex to this uh, vertex so therefore it is not strongly connected then again another example of uh, not strongly connected graph because in this i can go for example from uh, let's say this vertex and uh, let me give some names okay, so this is uh, one four five six and seven now I can uh, I can go from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to one, etc. Right? But uh, uh, but if I want to go, for example, from uh, six to two, right? I cannot go from six to two. Right? I can go from uh, let's say two to five, five to six, right? I can go from five to seven and six. Similarly, I can go from six to five and uh, six to seven, but I cannot go from six to three, right? Or six to two. So therefore, this is also not strongly connected. Then here is a strongly connected example where I can go from any vertex to any vertex because uh, I can go from, for example, vertex 1 to vertex 2, right, by taking any path, 2 to 1. And uh, similarly, from uh, 2, I can go to here and come back. here. And then uh, you will see that all these uh, can be reached from any other vertex to any other vertex. And therefore, we have a strongly connected uh, Given a directed graph uh, D, uh, we sometimes look at the arcs as the uh, undirected edges, as I mentioned before, and consider the under, un underlying uh, graph, right? So, uh, an example, you know, the directed graph D is represented here and the underlying graph uh, 
uh, the where we just discard the directions, right? So all the all the ordered tuples now becomes just uh, two element sets. Now this could be useful uh, uh, in uh, in several uh, occasions. So we will uh, we'll see that. Now a diagram is weakly connected if its underlying graph is connected. So if if you just look at the underlying graph, and see that it is actually connected, right? Then we say the diagram is weakly connected. I mean, it's not strongly connected because I cannot go from anywhere to anywhere. But it is weakly connected in the sense that, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, the underlying map allows us to uh, go. For example, if I have a, if I have a transport network where uh, some uh, paths are one ways, then of course you cannot go from, uh, uh, a vertex to you know uh, a, a point to another point may be taking a, a, an edge but on the other hand it says that you know in in case of some uh, special situations there is an there is a possibility of reversing the decision to make it one way right and then you can allow other direction path you know, it's, it's not uh, the excellent example or anything but uh, to say that why the weakly connectedness can be useful in some time so a strongly connected uh, graph is of course weakly connected also, right? because you know, if you can go in the directed graph you can always go in the undirected graph now as a homework question uh, you can think about uh, the following that uh, g is any any graph or a diagram and if you have a pair of vertices u and v then uh, there is a uv walk in g if and only if there is a uv path in g right so for graphs and diagrams, one can do right. So UV walk, uh, if and only if there is a UV path. So this uh, you can try to prove or or disprove if it is not true for either graph or diagram. And uh, this will be a nice uh, homework.